parents, legislators, members from the Arkansas Department of Education, welcome. And I'm going to start this out with a welcoming from our superintendent, Dr. Nancy Anderson. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Senator Clark, Darren Beckwith, Cutter Morning Star School Board, Cutter Morning Star Steering Committee, members of the press, parents, students, staff, community members. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so glad that you're here with us today. On behalf of Cutter Morning Star School District, I would like to welcome you to this momentous occasion. This is a day of celebration, a celebration of where we have been and where we are going. And this day culminates a complete community-wide effort. For more than 90 years, the Cutter Morning Star School District has welcomed students through its doors. 58 of those have included the doors of our existing high school building. During those years, the building you see now has created great memories and has helped inspire dreams in the minds of thousands of students. Now, the planning and construction of our new state-of-the-art high school plays a critical role in the hopes and aspirations of future, future generations. With the assistance of Jackson Brown Paul Kulik Architects, Hill and Cox Constructions, our new high school and arena will be the showcase of our commitment to engage, educate, and enrich every student. However, Cutter Morning Star is just not bricks and mortar. It's about students, the parents, the teachers who have stood the test of time. It symbolizes a community that believes in education, that believes education provides opportunities and understand, understands that investing in education is our future as well as the future of our students. We have amazing students, supportive parents and community members. We have a talented staff. Now under the leadership of Mr. Sullivan, with the new hostel on the horizon, we will have the total package. We will continue to dedicate ourselves to working hard to provide the best school experience possible to our students. But none of this would have been possible without the support and the hard work of some extremely dedicated members of our community. With the guidance of our steering committee, Brennan Heron, Angie Heaton, Diane Meredith, Crystal Hendricks, and Matt Carter. As well as our school board members, Mr. Mark Rash, Eddie Slick, Donna Fincher, Sandy Walker, and Jared Hawthorne. And of course, the stakeholders of this community all rallied together to make this possible. classrooms and the technology to go with them. These facilities paired with the CMS faculty will give our children every tool needed to become successful adults in the future. All this has been made possible by the CMS community and your willingness to continually invest in our children. 
As I look out into the crowd, I see community members that came before us who invested their time and energy, former board members, former teachers, and former Booster Club members as well. What a great example you've all set for us to follow, for those of us who now serve. I want to thank you for that. I remember when Dr. Anderson first talked about the need for a new school and about the millage needed to make it happen. I thought to myself, the job has finally gotten to her and she's lost it. We had a huge obstacle to obtain this millage increase needed to fund this facility. However, as we started to discuss the why and the how, it became clear we needed this to happen. What you see today is a result of many years of hard work, planning, and savings by countless individuals who work tirelessly to accomplish a common goal. I'm truly amazed by what our community continually achieves when working together for the betterment of our children. As I look back to my time at CMS, I graduated in 1993. Doesn't sound that long ago until you start putting the math to it. I look at the experiences, the people that I met, and the lifelong friendships I made, and I smile. I smile today because with the construction of our new high school, I know my children and many others will have these same opportunities. In closing, I want to leave you with a short quote from Albert Einstein. Learn from today, live for to tomorrow. Sorry, I started to screw that up. Learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. Today is a culmination of past, present, and future, and the future is very bright for CMS. Thank you. I'd like to begin today by thanking Dr. Anderson and the school board for all the uh, innovative things they've done for this school. I want to thank Mr. Sullivan and uh, all my coaches and teachers for the positive impact they've had on my life. And most importantly, I want to thank God for this opportunity to come to such an amazing school. I, Colby Heaton, and my friend Grace Lick have been chosen to represent the class of 2020 and we're just here to say how thankful we are and excited to be the first class to graduate from this great new building. This school has such a wonderful legacy with many alumni here today. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the many memories that have been made here from walking the halls of the many buildings to the illustrious nights we've all spent waiting on the final buzzer of an exciting game. I believe I speak for all of the students and staff when I say we're all excited for you to be here to uh, witness this new chapter in Coder Morning Stars history. Just like Colby, I want to thank everyone who worked so hard to get all of this made possible. Dr. Anderson, our school board members, um, everyone who works at the school, especially the teachers. Um, I think I speak for my whole class when I say we're excited that we're going to be the first class to graduate and <laughs> play sports in this new facility. It's just really exciting. I mean, all our teachers worked so hard for us, and now they're getting all these, uh, all the new technology and the space that they really need to make all of it possible. Uh, again, I just want to thank everyone who put so much work into doing this. And, I mean, we're super excited. Yeah. <laughs> and off and everything. He's an alumni from, um, or one of us from Pettimony Star School District, and it's for Alan Clark. So many that are more deserving to be standing up here that have poured your lives into this school school board members like Robbie Hancock and Eddie Swain, faculty members, those of you that have, that have just spent your lives revolved around this school and trying to make it better for your children and grandchildren. I drove up today, I guess first we're going to talk about Eagle Pride. I drove up today in my red and black truck my wife tried to take my red and black sunglasses away from me with my red and black tie, with my red and black handkerchief, with my red and black socks, and you'll just have to take my word for my underwear. <laughs> 
good to start off being funny because we will be serious before we get through. My last visit was for a career day just a few months ago. And every time I visit and tour my alma mater, I am impressed with the leadership, the faculty, the students, and the innovation that is going on here. When I'm here, though, I feel a little bit like a ghost. I'm at home, but those around me are looking at you thinking, who is this strange presence and why is he here? But it's an honor to be part of this historic, historic event. And I'm very touched that you asked me to participate. And let me be sure and recognize my beautiful wife, Jana Pruitt Clark, been married 39 years. Where she's at, but I, I'm here. And a 12 year attendee of, of CMS. Coincidentally, exactly 40 years ago, last Friday, was the last time I made a speech here. About 200 yards away, over in the gym, the ballot Victorian address for the class of 1978. And our keynote speaker was the state senator, who was also a former graduate. Who would have thought that 40 years from that night, I would be standing here talking about the future again? I love community schools. I have them across my district. With community comes history and sacrifice and struggle and commitment and vision. Let's talk about history. Each of you, if you were standing here, would have a story to tell. That's how community school is is a piece of each of us and each of us are a piece of it your story would be a little different but no less significant than mine jenna's mom juanita Lyles, and dad ralph pruitt both graduated from cutter morning star jenna's dad served on the school board jenna and her brothers mike and mitch all graduated from here my dad taught and coached here my sister, Susie and Becky, and, all, and I all graduated from CMS, as did our son, Drew. Between our families, there have been two valedictorians, two homecoming queens, and two class presidents. Although my classmates thought I was a latecomer arriving in my junior year in the fall of 1976, that was not really true. My first memories are of CMS, my very first memories. I was born on August 11, 1960 in Arkadelphia. Within a week or two, Dad began his first teaching job right here. And by the winter of 1961, Mom and Dad had bought the small home on the hill on Weston House Drive that Clyde Horton built where I grew up. For the next four years, as the infant child of a young teacher, I was spoiled by the classes of 1961, 1962, 1963, and 1964. So I predated all of my class at Cutter Morning Star. Our families have been part of many firsts at CMS. And I want to talk about these firsts because first are because at a community school, you're always struggling to do more for your kids. Dad coached the first track team that ever existed here. And though they did not have uniforms or equipment, they went to state. Jonah's brother Mitch and I both played on the first football team in the fall of 1977, as did at, you know, Mr. Tucker, I call him Tad. I owned the first and only football letter jacket from that year because when none were provided, I bought my own. The rest all had basketball letter jackets, so they didn't care as much as I did. Jen and I were in the first football homecoming held jointly with Fountain Lake at Lakeside because neither school had a field. In the fall of 1978, Jenna was queen, and we had a joint homecoming again with Fountain Lake, this time at their new field. In 1979, my sister Susie was the first football homecoming queen on our own field as my friends from the class of 1980, including Mr. Tucker, beat Fountain Lake for the first time. <laughs> and no, we won't ever forget. We were proud when Shay, our daughter, was in Cutter's first band. And when she was the first student to ever compete and make all region band from Cutter. Our son, Drew, played on Cutter's first Pee Wee football teams and I coached. And we were very proud when he was on Miss Juicy's first Quiz Bowl state championship teams. 
Now I know that there were lots and lots of other firsts that I haven't named that your family were, was part of. I know that you have the same eagle pride that my family has. And I really shared our memories and our first with you to get you thinking about your own and to set up this most important first that ties in to what we are, why we are here today. We keep having first because we keep doing more and more for our kids. I want to reach back in history to 1925 to a man named Freddie Johnson and some really important firsts. There were three little schools in this area. At least two of them were one room schoolhouses. Cutter over on Mill Creek, Morning Star down by Morning Star Methodist, and High Point out close to our home in the vicinity of the rest area. If you wanted your children to go to high school, their only option was Hot Springs School, and you had to find a way by horse, wagon, bicycle, or walking to get there. Needless to say, for many poor people, that left the high school education out of reach. Mr. Johnson got up a petition. There was a vote in 1922. 32 to 10. And Cutter Morning Star became the first consolidated rural school district in Garland County. A school we all now take for granted. 1925 seemed like ancient history in 1960. That was before, 1925 was before my parents were born. But 1925 was only 35 years before my dad started, started teaching school here. And as I said, it's been 40 years since I made a speech over there in the gym. Not so long ago. Hardly any time at all. Before that short period of time, you could not take going to high school for granted in this community. But Freddie Johnson had the vision and foresight and commitment to take action. There are more first. Cutter Morning Star in 1925 was also the first school in the county to buy school buses to get these children to school. Now, like Freddie Johnson, I have seen your vision and I have seen your commitment. We stand here today ready to break ground because you are committed, just like he was, to providing the children of this community with the infrastructure they need for a proper education. But now that I have seen your vision and your commitment and your eagle pride, I must challenge you because I have seen what you can do. So don't tell me that you can't. I am the Senate Chair of the Education Caucus. I am proud in my four counties to represent some of the best schools in the state. But statewide, two years ago, only 35% of our fourth graders were reading proficient. Today it is 41%, but that is still less than half. That is a shame. These kids, your kids and grandkids, are competing with China and India. We must win. Let me tell you what I have learned on the Education Committee. Academic success is not about school size. It is not about wealth of the community. It certainly has to do with the leadership and faculty, but you have that. But even they are still not the key. We have found that the key in deciding whether the school will flourish academically is the same thing that will decide if a football, basketball, softball, or band program will flourish locally. Community, commitment, and expectations. Freddie <laughs> Johnson gave us a great start in 1925. I have seen what you are capable of in getting this high school millage passed. As we stand here today, I ask you to challenge Dr. Anderson and this faculty, and then join together with Dr. Anderson and this faculty to compete academically, and by academically, I mean test scores, with any school around. I saw Sean Cook out here. And by compete, I mean win. Just as my dad saw those young men and knew they could run, I have seen your kids and they are as smart as any in this state. You have given them a building because you, like Freddie Johnson, had the vision to not sell for less than what they deserve. Sell for nothing less than the best in academics. Listen carefully. I did not say blame Dr. Anderson and the faculty. I did not say pay at lip service. I have complete faith in Dr. Anderson and the faculty that if you partner with them, they will deliver. I have told you the key. 
The key is you. The key is the community. The doc Dr. Anderson and the faculty could not deliver this building and they cannot magically deliver you academics. You, you are the key. You will have what you want. You wanted a building. Do you want the best education to go with it? You have shown that you have the vision of Freddie Johnson when it comes to the education of the children in this community. Do not let it stop at a building. Show us your eagle pride. I am so proud of you today. I am so proud of my community. I am so proud of our school. Continue to make us proud. Of CMS. Every single graduating class of Cut and Morning Star, every single student that has ever walked these halls has helped us to get where we are today. We are surrounded by people who have helped us get there. Administrators, teachers, staff members, parents, students, community mem members, and business partners have all played a part in this journey. And these groups are represented by the ones that set, that stand before you. Our superintendent, Dr. Nancy Anderson, our school board members, Mark Rash, Eddie Slick, Donna Fincher, Jared Hawthorne, and Sandy Walker. Our steering committee, Brennan Heron, Angie Heaton, Diane Meredith, Crystal Hendricks, and Matt Carter. Senator Alan Clark, they each represent the tirelessness and unselfish effort put forth by so many in this community. This ground that we are going to be breaking may look identical to soil that you can find at any location, but this ground represents the hopes, the dreams of these who came before us and the successes of those that will follow. It has been said that education of our children is the assurance of the long longevity of our community. And with the addition of this new high school, Cut and Morning Star will remain the strong force of knowledge and learning for many years to come. So without a further ado, can I hear that drum roll please? I need a little bit more than that. Come on. Go Eagles. Let me hear you say it. Go Eagles. So without Father ado, if I could have groundbreaking participants to step forward, are you ready? With their shovels and hard hats, and if the audience would please help us with the countdown. Three, let me hear you, three, two, one, go Eagles! so exciting. Um, it's awesome to have all these people out here today. Um, like Meadow said before, I graduated Monday and it is very sad to leave the school that molded me into the student that I am today. Um, in honor of our student council and our awesome sponsors, Ms. Luke and Ms. Neighbors, we have a bench that we will be dedicating to our new school. So I'm really excited to see what the future brings and thank you all for participating in this. Between our parents and your parents, we, they may have been the first neighbors in that neighborhood. So, uh, and, and the other thing that, that, that really catches me up here is I look around and see some folks that graduated around the time I did. Hey, y'all are looking old. What is up with that? <laughs> Ah, oh, I see you back there, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> but what I would tell you, when the, uh, you know, they were pushing for the millage, a couple of people said, are you surprised that it passed? I said, absolutely not. Because Cutter has always had that kind of community. When they see a need, need for a kid, they get on it and they make it happen. Um, again, you know, I can remember, I think I was in sixth grade when we got the football field rolling. Uh, Dad and my middle brother were up here helping a guy put those poles in and the one that leans, whichever way it leans up there, that tells you it's been like almost, what, 35, 36 years ago and it's still standing. We didn't believe the guy when he told us. We said, that thing will be falling over the next month. And he said, no way, it's good. So he, he was right. Again, I was wrong. 
Uh, but what I would tell you, it's truly an honor for me to be here today, and I am extremely proud of you and for you. I can't wait to see the things that uh, are going to grow out of this. In my current position, uh, I have 22 schools that, that we're affiliated with, and, and I tell you, it does my heart good to see that Cutter is keeping up with the times, and in a very short time, you're going to be passing, folks, I promise you. And uh, because you, you younger ones, you're the future. It's great. It touches my heart to look out here and, and see smiles on your faces. And the good news is, what, you've got like four or five days left and it's summertime, right? <laughs> All right. But uh, I want to share one more memory with you. This, this kind of sums up my athletic career. So I had a twin sister, as I said, and that was back before they would separate us. You know, now if you got twins, they separate them. So from time to time, we'd have the same class. But athletically speaking, she was, I mean, she dominated. And uh, of course, you know, I, I was more of a cheerleader than anything. And at award banquets, she'd get a couple of trophies. So it was our senior year. And at that time, they had an award called the Mr. Eagle Award. And it wasn't about, you know, the best player, obviously. But it, it was, you know, character and all these other things. Man, I was so proud of that trophy. You know, I had finally outdid my sister, so I thought. I had this one little trophy, she comes home with like a half a dozen. So that, again, that tells you how, what kind of athlete that was. But what I want to encourage you guys to do, as Senator Clark said, uh, not only challenge Dr. Anderson, but you need to challenge yourself. Um, because he's not, he's not, he is not far off when he says he's been to other schools and and you know we like to compare them but there's no reason no reason at all that cutter morning star can't be the school that people will flock to no pun intended that just rolled out but <laughs> but at the end of the day again i just want to thank you all for coming thank you for the opportunity and uh, go eagles and this is the other thing folks tell me they'll say uh, if, if you'll talk to another uh, you know folks from around when i introduce myself they'll say Where'd you go to high school? And I said, cut her, cut her for life, baby. And and that's what, and, and that's how people know me. So remember that. And, and I truly believe that once you leave Cutter Morning Star, I mean, there's still gonna be a piece of that in your heart. So carry that with you and build on it. And again, thank you for having me.